I think we're ready for the next session. Uh, I know ma most of you must be tired and hungry and in need of a coffee, but you still have to bear with us. It's because our, the last session is going to be a really interesting one. Um, our main theme will be the fiscal impact, uh, the sovereign debt, and the most of all, the future of, of the euro. Uh, being coming from Greece, I think I'm the best host you can get if we talk about euro, so <laughs> I won't have to do a lot of talking. So Mr. Takemori will start, he will set the framework, and then we'll continue with the roundtable about the future of our beloved currency. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much. <coughs> I'm a Professor Takemori from Japan, and for the moment I'm a, a visiting uh, professor to uh, University Ka Foscari in Italy, so I'm also aware of the uh, situation there. I have to thank a great deal about the uh, invitation and everything, but I think the best way to convey my gratitude is to make my speech short. So I just say thank you very much. <coughs> and uh, another thing is that uh, I'm really excited about talking uh, on this topic, which touches on the European economy uh, to a Japanese. You asked me to do, do this. So let me start this uh, talk in a very Japanese way. Let, I, I want to start with a question. Why Japanese uh, interest rate, government bond interest rate, so low, uh, despite the fact we have a mountains and mountains of debt, you know, government debts? Uh, but, uh, by the way, we, we have <coughs> about uh, our gross li liability, public liability, is 219% of our GDP. Compared to that, <coughs> that of Germany is 80%, and that of Italy is 140%. So we had a big, big uh, debt problem. But despite that, you look at <coughs> interest rate. 10 years government bonds in Japan is right now a little bit below 1%, okay? Compared to that, in Germany, it is 2%. In it, in United States, it's 2.5%, okay? It is so low. And I would say <coughs> one reason why this is so low is uh, something to do with deflation. We, are, we have long-lining deflation problem. But the other problem, <coughs> other thing, and that, that I think this touches on the European problem, so that I, I want to emphasize. It's the openness, openness of the border. I think the, uh, uh, the r fundamental reason you have a, such terrible mess uh, of, of the crisis is that you have open border, and it's been the goal of European integration to open the border, okay? So I will uh, pick up one example why this, is, this matter. Let's take, there are two banks, B and G. B is a bad one, G is a good one, okay? If these two banks are in the same country, country's authority will fear that the deposit move from B to G. So they will do something, they will protect so that they are equally safe, okay? So that is what they will do. Suppose B and G are located in, a different, in different countries, two different countries, B in country B and G in country G. And, and both governments said that I'm going to, uh, country G, B says that I'm going to protect B, country G says I'm going to protect G. <clears throat> now, the question is if these two countries have a different financial conditions, and if the market, oh, ma sorry, economic border between B and G is totally, totally open, is, it, is there a problem? Yes, I would say there's a problem. If the border is completely open, People look at, instead of Bank B directory, look at government B. And if country, uh, government B's finance is not that good, the promise that government B is doing that I'm going to protect this bank is not that credible. On the other hand, if uh, government G is credible and the finance is good, its promise to protect uh, Bank G is credible. Okay? In that situation, if the, the investor get nervous, they're going to shift the money from B to G, country B from G. So this is a typical capital flight, and which happened in Europe in, uh, after the, the Lehman crisis because investors get nervous. Okay? Now, I answer uh, my first question. Why Japanese uh, government interest rate low, so low despite the fact that we have a terrible, terrible fiscal condition? The answer is that our, our economic border is not open. <coughs> okay? And uh, look at uh, uh, what Japanese savers can do. They can perhaps 
uh, shift their deposit to Chinese bank account, you know, some bank in China. And China has a better financial condition, fiscal condition, but moving in to the Chinese banking account is not that easy. But you can, you can move it to Wall Street if you like, but then it will be under the risk of uh, exchange rate fluctuation. So Japanese savers are, are captive clients of our country, so they, are, they have to satisfy with low interest rate and high risk, okay? So that's a bad. But on the other hand, you have a European problem when the crisis happened, since open, uh, the border is completely open, it's very difficult to change. <coughs> uh, well, the question is how bad B, country B's finance should be? How good country G's finance should be for this kind of capital flight to happen? The answer is it depends on the openness of the border. In the, in the extreme case, where moving money from B to G, let's say from Ireland to Germany, <coughs> is so easy, it is costless, then a very tiny, tiny, tiny difference of, uh, between B and G can create the massive capital flow. So I think this is what uh, Europe is fa facing. Uh, you have, um, before the crisis, this uh, completely open border has created an inflow of capital from Germany to Ireland. I cite one number. Germany's lending, Germany's lending to Ireland is 260% of Irish GDP. So Ireland borrowed just from Germany, 260% of its GDP. And now German uh, banks are, are worrying about, maybe not Ireland anymore, <coughs> but about Spain, about uh, Greece, and, and then they, they may pouring out. Basically, <coughs> you have four solutions for this kind of, four form, fundamental solution for this, okay? One is <coughs> government B, try to be, become like government G, okay? Bad government becomes good government. So I think this is basically the idea of fiscal compact. <coughs> if uh, they try austerity measures, they try uh, reduce government debts, and one, one day they become like uh, Germany, <coughs> then this capital flight will, will stop. But remember, if the op border is so open, okay, just a tiny difference can pro create, still create the problem, okay? So that is the problem. Uh, <coughs> and uh, even if uh, eventually B can become G, <coughs> it may take a long, long time. So that is one problem. Second and third solution. The second solution that unify <coughs> the budget of two governments, B and G, together. This is the idea of political union but uh, it was rejected out of hand. Uh, it's it's uh, I I impossible to think that uh, Germany and uh, Greece share the common budget. So that was rejected. The another uh, idea is now floating around, that is a banking union. So instead of country G protect bank G and country B, bank B, some new entity, consolidated entity, take care of B and G together. In that case, B and G become a core safe so that the capital shift won't happen. Unfortunately, there are <coughs> false uh, solution which is contrary <coughs> to global finance, the contrary also to the idea of European integration. That is closing the border. Since a uh, basic problem that money is so easily flowing out or flowing in between Germany and Ireland. Uh, how about closing the border? <clears throat> I think they don't want to touch this subject for a while because uh, this is contrary to idea. But unfortunately, this is a solution that they have adopted in the Cyprian case, and Cyprian government has a now capital control. So which of uh, four <clears throat> you're gonna choose is rather a political question. I just enumerated these so options, but not say this is the one to go, because this is a difficult choice for all of you, because um, you, it, bases, it should base on the cost and benefit calculation. Which option has the least cost and which has the uh, most benefit, okay? Unfortunately, the answer depends on the country. <clears throat> Let's take the German side. <clears throat> German side, of course, prefer fiscal compact because uh, if B becomes G by their own effort, G does not uh, save B, okay? B becomes already B, uh, G, so it's okay. I, I don't take care of anything about it. 
Or the, but of course, if the problem countries uh, <coughs> favor solution two or three, political union or fiscal union. Unfortunately, this is not the uh, best idea for the German public, because uh, <coughs> if B think that I, I'm uh, equally safe as G, you know, they can expect the money coming from G to save eventual problem. So that is a perspective that uh, uh, Germany is entertaining still now. Now, <coughs> you have to worry about the deflation, because when, once deflation picking up, and the, in these newspapers, Financial Times, look at the uh, 24 ore, these newspapers, they're talking about in, uh, deflation. Now, deflation makes this problem still bigger because deflation increases the value of one euro. So in order to pay one euro, you have to produce more. Okay? That, of course, favors creditors, those who are lending, because they get one euro, yes, but one euro is worth more than before. So creditor country like Germany like the, this idea. On the other hand, this is a hell of a problem we have experienced in Japan for the debtor because you have to pay, you have to work more and more to get just one euro, okay? So you have to worry about um, the deflation and I'm, I'm very glad that uh, uh, Mr. Draghi is pretty much aware of the problem so that he has cut the interest rate recently. Sorry, I over, over, overshoot uh, th uh, three seconds. Sorry.